about cloud computing infrastructure. A cloud computing infrastructure is a collection of hardware and software that enables the five essential characteristics of cloud computing. Cloud computing infrastructure usually consisting of few set of layers. So those layers are the physical layer, physical layer or physical infrastructure, virtual infrastructure, application and platform software and the last one is cloud management and service creation tools. So as I mentioned before cloud computing infrastructure usually consist of the following layers. The first one is physical infrastructure, virtual infrastructure, application and platform, software, cloud management and service creation tools. So we'll take one by one. First we'll take physical infrastructure. The physical infrastructure consists of physical computing resources which includes physical servers, storage systems and networks. Physical interface basically consisting of physical servers, storage systems and networks. Physical servers are connected to each other to the storage system and to the client via network. So we can interconnect the physical servers to the storage system and to the client via networks like IP, FCSAN, IPSAN or FCOE networks. Cloud service providers may use physical computing resources from one or more data centers to provide the service. So here the cloud service models or cloud service providers, so they can use physical computing resources from one or more data centers to provide these services. If the computing resources are distributed across multiple data centers, connectivity must be established among them. Suppose the computing resources the computing resources are distributed. If it is distributed across multiple data centers, so we have to have, we have to maintain the connectivity need to be established between them. So next we'll take virtual infrastructure. Cloud service provider providers employ virtualization technologies. So in the cloud platform we can have the virtualization technologies in order to build a virtual infrastructure layer on the top of the physical infrastructure. On the top of the physical infrastructure we will be having virtual infrastructure which can be built a build a virtual infrastructure layer. Virtualization enables fulfilling some of the cloud characteristics such as resource pooling. The cloud characteristics such as resource pooling as well as rapid elasticity. It also helps to reduce the cost of providing the cloud services. Some cloud service providers may not have completely virtualized their physical infrastructure yet, but they are adapting virtualization for better efficiency and optimization. 
So virtualization abstracts physical computing resources and provides a consolidated view on the resource capacity. The consolidated resources are managed as a single entity called as resource pool. So we can have a single uh, resource capacity and we can uh, consolidate that resource resource as a single entity and which can be called as resource pool. So next we'll take applications and platform software. This layer includes a suite of business applications and platforms platform softwares such as operating system and database. So basically it consisting of OS and database. Platform software provides the environment on which business applications can run. So on which we can run the business applications. Applications and platform software are hosted on virtual machines that means VMs to create SaaS and PaaS. So depending upon the service, service, so we can create the VMs, virtual machines on the applications or platforms. For SaaS, both the applications and platform softwares are provided by the cloud service provider. The cloud service provider will provide the application and platform software, software where the actual, uh, actual applications can run. In the case of PaaS, only platform service is provided by the cloud service provider. So later on, the consumers export their applications to the cloud. So here the applications will not be provided. Instead of that, only the software will be provided. That means the platform software will be provided by the cloud service providers. So the last one is cloud management and service creation tool. The cloud management and service creation tool tools layers includes three types of software. First one is physical and virtual infrastructure management software. The second one is unified management software and third one is user access management software. So this classification is done based on the different functions performed by the software. So these softwares interacts with each other to automate provisioning of cloud services. First we'll take physical and virtual infrastructure management software. The physical and virtual infrastructure management software is offered by the vendors of various infrastructure resources and third party organization. So physical and virtual infrastructure managed softwares. So these can be offered by either the vendors of various infrastructure resources or else third party organizations. For example, a storage array has its own management software. We know that the storage array has its own management software. Similarly, network and physical servers are managed independently using network and compute management softwares respectively. So suppose if you're having one storage array, so uh, the storage array has its own management software, but the network and physical servers can be managed separately using the network and compute management software. So I can say that the physical servers can be managed by the compute software and the servers can be uh, managed by the uh, managed by the, uh, the network software. So this software provides interface to construct a virtual infrastructure from the underlying physical infrastructure. 
So the entire set of uh, software uh, which can be provided with the interface interfaces in order to build a new virtual infrastructure considering the under, uh, underlying physical infrastructure. So we can have uh, uh, the physical and virtual infrastructure management software by considering vendor's perspective or third party perspective. So next is unified management software. Unified management software interacts with all standalone physical and virtual infrastructure management software. So this unified management software, it will uh, interact with all the other physical and virtual, physical and virtual infrastructure management software. It collects all the set of informations on the existing physical and virtual infrastructure configurations, connectivity and utilization. It collects the information, this unified software management, it collects the information by considering the configuration its connectivity as well as utilization as well as utilization so this unified management software compiles this information and provides a consolidated view by considering so these points so it will create a consolidated view of infrastructure resources scattered across one or more data centers. It allows an administrator to monitor performance, capacity and availability of physical and virtual resources centrally. Centrally, an administrator can monitor or else he can manage the performance of the entire system, capacity and availability of the physical and virtual resources. It uh, software also provides a single management interface to configure the physical and virtual infrastructure and integrate the compute that means CPU and the combination of CPU and memory network and storage pools. So the unified management software passes the configuration credentials to the respective physical and virtual infrastructure management software which execute the instructions. So now we'll take what is the key function of unified management software. The key function of the unified management software is automate automate the creation of cloud service so this is important that means unified uh, management software software which is used uh, in order to automate the creation of cloud service it also enables administrator to define service attributes the service attributes may be cpu power CPU power or I can say memory or bandwidth or capacity etc. So the unified management software enables administrators to define some set of service attributes. When the unified management software receives consumers request for cloud services it creates a service based on predefined service attributes so uh, whenever any request comes from the consumer side so unified uh, uh, unified management software it will create the service based on the predefined service attributes so we already considered what are the key attributes like cpu power memory bandwidth capacity etc the last cloud management and service creation tool is user access management software. 
The user access management software provides a web-based user interface to the consumer. As the name specifies, the user access management software prov provides an interface to the consumer. Consumers can use the interface to browse the service catalogs and request the cloud service. So they can interface, the consumers can uh, browse the service catalogs which is provided by the user access management software and they can request for any kind of cloud services. The user access management software authenticates users before forwarding their request to the unified management software. So here we are using user access management software authentic uh, authentication. After authentications, the user's request can be forwarded to the management software. It also monitors allocations or usage of resources associated to the cloud service instance. Based on the allocations or usage of resources, it generates a chargeback report. So this chargeback report is visible to the consumer and provides transparency between the consumers and the service provider.